On this episode of Hot Rod Hoarders, I'm going to show you the ultimate low mileage Mopar. It is a 1970 Plymouth Cuda with 149 miles on it. And just as a bonus, it's a drag car. So let's check this thing out. So my side job for the last 12 years or so has been photographing and writing magazine articles for automotive magazines. And that has given me the opportunity to see some really cool stuff. I've seen a lot of cool events, I've photographed a lot of cool cars, but this car I'm gonna show you today is pretty much the top of the food chain. I mean, it's a exclusive car. Not many people have gotten to see this car in person, and I actually had the opportunity to photograph it and tell the story of this car as well as the other cars in this guy's collection. The guy's name is Milburn Varner, and he's an old dude, and he had lots of stories to tell me, and he's got a collection that he called bragging rights. And, you know, when people would ask him why he didn't just sell this stuff, or why didn't he do something with it, you know, his answer was typically because these are just bragging rights. The longer this car sits here, the more he can brag about it. So, in that case, you know, he was really open to bragging to me about all of his racing adventures and the cars that he had bought and sold and uh, raced with over the years. And all of it started with a 1953 Pontiac. Um, he's not a Pontiac man by any means. He is all the way Mopar. So Milburn got the bug by racing this Pontiac. And that really kind of sent him on a journey for years. I mean, we're talking probably 20 years that he drag raced almost every weekend. And a lot of times you would drag race more than once a weekend. Like at our local tracks here around Chattanooga, some would open on Friday, some would open on Saturday, some would open on Sunday. And he would hit them all three. And he and his brother-in-law, David, would switch driving each time. So, you know, they kind of got equal parts. They bought a 1963 Plymouth Belvedere. And this is a Max Wedge car. This is a pretty highly sought after car, even back then you know, people didn't view them as rare and valuable, but they did view them for their potential on the drag strip. I mean, this was top of the food chain for Superstock. They bought that car and they raced their hearts out. I mean, they raced every weekend. They won money. And actually, one of the coolest things that he showed me in his collection was his drag racing ledger. And they had written down every dime that they spent and every dime that they won. And they actually came out ahead in the 1967 season. And we're talking like if they bought a pack of crackers at the gas station, they put it down on this list. I mean, it was really neat to see this uh, and see how diligent they were about keeping a budget. I mean, they were looking at this as like an actual profit center. So that was really cool to see that. And again, I felt really kind of special to be able to see this kind of stuff. I mean, he didn't just break this out for everybody to see. They had really good success with the 63 Max Wedge car, so they stepped up to a 64 Max Wedge car a few years later and didn't have quite as much success with it. They didn't love the car quite as much. It just didn't work as well. It was another Max Wedge car. It was another really highly sought after car, but they eventually sold it after a couple of years and it went on to run around here locally uh, under different ownership in the Superstock ranks. You know, they were really getting serious about racing. And Milburn actually worked at Austin Motors, which is on Broad Street in downtown Chattanooga. And he worked there in the shop. He had access to a lot of good parts, a lot of good cars. And in late 1969, he bought a brand new 1970 Plymouth Cuda. 440 six pack car with an automatic. He ordered it specifically to go drag racing. He was going to continue to race in the super stock ranks and he was going to go up against the cars that were, you know, really paving the way for the new era of super stock. Cars like the LS6 Chevelle. And Ford had a few contenders, but it was really that big block Chevelle that encouraged him to make this purchase. When Milburn bought it, he drove the car around a little bit. And he drove it home, which was about 25 miles from, from where he worked. And that was really about it as far as that car's street life. So he immediately took it in the garage. He started changing stuff on it. He changed the rear end gear. He changed, uh, you know, the exhaust and whatever was legal for super stock at the time. 
So he made minimal changes. He didn't put a roll cage in it. He didn't gut out the interior. You know, it was factory seats, factory dash, factory steering wheel, factory everything in this car, aside from a cable drive tachometer. So, you know, to look inside this car, it was just like looking inside an all original car. And I made sure to take a picture and get my eyeballs on that odometer that said 149 miles. And I wanted to get the story on that because even if you drag race this thing and only went a quarter mile at a time, you know, you would eventually get more than 149 miles on it. But he said that once he changed out the rear end gear that it made the speedometer so crazy that he just decided to unhook the cable. So the 149 miles was basically the little bit of street driving that he did so where this really gets interesting is I told you that this was a 446 pack car originally. Milburn had the opportunity to put his hands on a lot of really good cars. One of those cars was a 1967 Plymouth GTX convertible with a factory Hemi in it. This is one of 17 cars. And he was able to buy the GTX convertible from the dealership and take it home, pull that Hemi engine out of there and use it for his race car. At the time, Milburn knew that this was a pretty special car. A Hemi in a convertible, I mean, that was pretty rare, but he had no idea it was one of 17 until much later in the years when the Mopar craze kind of hit in the two, early 2000s and those prices were going crazy. All of a sudden, everybody realized that they had a rare Mopar. And in his case, he legitimately did. He had a one of 17 built Hemi GTX convertible and he plucked that motor out of there and stuck it in his race car. I mean, this is the ultimate story of a car guy who just wanted to go fast. Part of the reasoning for wanting a Hemi engine in the Barracuda was that it was a factory option. It would allow him to stay in the super stock ranks. The cubic inches was actually less than what he was running, 440 versus 426, um, and that allowed him to run in the super stock D automatic class, which was highly contested in 1970 through about 74. I mean, this was a tough, tough class to compete in. Milburn and David raced this car for a few years, but they could see the riding on the wall. They could see that drag racing was moving away from its grassroots and going into more of, you know, whoever has the most money wins the most races. And in their case, I mean, they didn't want to go broke trying to win. So they did what any other crazy Mopar guy would do and they parked that car in his basement and never touched it again. So when I went to visit Milburn, I spent some time in his garage, which is a big metal building, and then I spent some time in his house, you know, just talking cars, Tim telling me stories, and, um, and when it came time to go look at the Cuda, I was a little bit nervous because, I mean, I'm already in this guy's house. He does seem a little bit paranoid that people are after him and that people uh, want to come steal his cars and all that and I'm I'm a, one of those people like is the way I'm feeling so he takes me downstairs into the basement garage and there it sits I mean the most perfect 1970 Hemi Cuda that I've ever seen I mean and I, and there's nothing that's going to top it I mean unless there was one with 147 miles on it maybe but this thing was original paint it had all the old lettering it had its American racing wheels, it had its slicks, which were deflated, but they were still there. It had all the sponsor decals, which really weren't sponsors, except for the Honest Charlie decal. He actually was sponsored by Honest Charlie, and he got a $50 Honest Charlie bonus if he won the race. And he used that bonus to buy slicks and, you know, just maintenance items for the car. I mean, this was a really good racer program back then. It encouraged people to shop locally, and it benefited the racer because he didn't have to pay out of pocket for slicks and things like that. Also in the basement were engine blocks, lots of them, 440s, Hemi's, uh, stuff that, you know, I didn't really know the significance of it, but he explained some of that to me. He had a, an old Hilburn injector for 426 Hemi sitting there. He had some good speed parts in there and some stuff that, you know, he didn't want me to show in the magazine, which is fine. And, uh, the, you know, but the real crown jewel of this whole collection was that Cuda. So I just was making laps around it. I was looking inside, underneath, 
you know, trying every way I could to take a good picture of it so that it really showed people how cool and how complete and how original this car was. Because it was just something I, I mean, I felt like I couldn't put it into words how special this car was. And, you know, putting it in Hot Rod Magazine was really special to him. I mean, that was like a, a lifetime achievement for a car guy from the 60s and 70s to get published in Hot Rod. I mean, that was awesome. And I enjoy that kind of stuff too. And that's really the reason why I'm putting this video together as well, is to continue telling that story. Milburn parked this car in 1974, and you know, even though I had an opportunity to see it, I still didn't see it in the sunshine. I didn't see it cleaned up. I didn't see the real potential of this car. I saw it you know, as a true barn find or basement find, whatever you want to call it. I saw it as a car that just hadn't been touched. It hadn't even been wiped off in 40 years. I knew the day was coming for Milburn, you know, that he's not going to last forever. He was an old guy when I did the article and, you know, uh, time just is kind of the enemy here. I want to soak up everything I can get from these old drag racers and uh, hear all the stories and see all the pictures and all the notes that they took and all of everything that they have to share. I just want to soak it all up. And I'm fortunate that I was able to do that with Milburn while he was alive. But he did, he passed away a year or two ago and you know I was kind of fearful of what was going to happen with his collection because his family didn't really embrace the old car stuff and they certainly didn't embrace kind of his mentality of these are bragging rights. Uh, they just wanted him to either do something with them or sell them or just whatever. So anyways, a, a few months passed after Milburn passed away and I was kind of thinking about what happened to all of his cars, if they're just still sitting there untouched or if they got sold off to a private collector or whatever and all of a sudden I got uh, tagged on a Facebook comment and it was some pictures of the Drag Addicts Cuda and this car had gone to a new home and it had gone hundreds of miles away it had gone to Michigan and you know at first I was a little bit disappointed that this car that had been bought in Chattanooga raced around Chattanooga at every single track that we've got around here. I felt sad that the thing went away, that it's not in Tennessee anymore. It's not even close. It's hundreds of miles away in Michigan. But then I saw that the guy, he cared about the car. He was the right guy to get it. And, uh, you know, as I've seen the progression of this car, I realize it even more that he truly appreciates it for what it is. And the guy's name is Dean Heron. And he's, he's a muscle car guy. He's had quite a few really awesome cars. And he actually bought the Plymouth Cuda drag car and the Plymouth GTX convertible. He has the original numbers matching engine. It just happens to be in another car. So he got like a killer package deal. And I mean, I'm sure he paid for it. I'm sure he paid well. But he got two just absolutely epic Mopars. One of them with 149 miles, one of them is one of 17. I mean, you can't get much of a better pair than that. And the thing that really showed me that this was the right guy for the cars is that he's been preserving the cars. He hasn't been making big changes. He hasn't been doing anything crazy like getting rid of the hand lettering. He's actually been doing what I would have done if I got my hands on those cars. He cleaned the paint up just washed and waxed this thing and I, it is unbelievable. He put some fresh tires and wheels on it. You know, he cleaned up some things here and there, but he left the engine bay completely as found. You know, there's still some paint chipping off the valve covers or some paint chipping off the inner fenders and stuff like that. So when I visited Milburn, I didn't get to hear that car run. You know, I didn't get to see it cleaned up. I just appreciated it for what it was. You know, just an epic barn find type of car. And now that this thing is cleaned up, now that it's running and drivable, I mean, it's just a whole nother level of awesome. I mean, this thing is just a piece of drag racing history and it's a piece of Chattanooga history. I'm not gonna forget about that, that this car has roots right here where I'm from. And it's one of the cars that really, you know, it uh, encouraged me 
to seek out these old drag cars. It's what really got me started on documenting cars and digging up history and listening to all those stories that he had to tell and making notes of all of it. That's really what started me on it, was this car and this collection. So, you know, I obviously want to show it off here and show off that this thing went to a good home, a caring home that is going to do it right. Milburn was pretty adamant about not selling his stuff. He didn't even want anybody around it because he just knew that people were going to ask him if he wanted to sell it or make him some kind of crazy offer or whatever. And he had some pretty intense offers on the GTX convertible and the, the CUDA drag car um, you know, that he didn't take. And that I just love that about him, that he cared more about the cars than he did about the money. And... You know, I just, I, I can't get enough of that kind of stuff. That really hits me hard because I'm the same way. There's no amount of money that can buy that Corvette back there. I mean, I realize it's a valuable car, but you ain't buying it. It means more to me than any stack of $100 bills that you could give me. So don't even ask. But I'm going to read something to you. I wanted to make sure this got in the article. I'm going to make sure it gets in this video. It's something that Milburn said to me, and I scratched it down on a notepad. And I want to just end this video with this. Milburn said, I ain't selling this stuff. It's about the bragging rights. And the money don't mean as much as these old cars and all the good memories they gave me. Even though Milburn isn't with us anymore, I just feel like he would be proud of the direction this car's going. You know, he wouldn't be mad about it. He wouldn't be upset that somebody changed his car. He would be joyful to hear those open headers, to see this thing moving under its own power again, to see that paint shining again. I mean, there's no way that he could be upset with what this car has become. I mean, it is exactly the way he had it uh, from 1970 to 1974, and I just don't think you can get any better than this.